Aminda Pal Singh, mm -hmm. and I'm the CEO of Helping People Succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, we specialize in giving training courses, motivational self-improvement, mm -hmm. and we focus in all areas of life, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual, uh, financial, and everything else. Mm. Wow, that's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I travel quite a bit around the world, and I just mm -hmm. came back also recently, and sometimes I lose my voice just because of that. So today I'm mm -hmm. very sorry, I may not sound the best yes. on mic. Mm -hmm. So having uh, done that for many, many, many years mm -hmm. all this while, I've also been attached to different companies, small and big, mm -hmm. where we help people develop the potential uh, among their colleagues, mm -hmm. among their employees, and bring them to the best. Mm -hmm. And that's how we directly I got involved in the elections here, because mm -hmm. um, Mr. Desmond Lim, who is our chairman of the Singapore Democratic Alliance, mm -hmm. he once saw me on stage at the Singapore Expo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. And there were like 6,000 people sitting there. I'm not sure who he was at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow he has this eye for talent, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then he followed up from there because mm -hmm. he saw me speaking to those people and he thought that maybe if I could speak to 6,000 people on stage and inspire mm -hmm. them, maybe there was some role I could play in helping uh, make mm -hmm. Singapore a better place for all. So is that the reason why you decide to run? Um, actually, that is one of the indirect reasons because from young I've always mm -hmm. been involved in community service uh, whether it was on my own uh, small scale in the temples and upbringing where I was in Sikh mm -hmm. or also in NTU, I was the president of the students' union mm -hmm. and um, I mean it was a very challenging thing because when I became the president mm -hmm. uh, it, I was just in the second year and usually people mm -hmm. in the third year and yeah, fourth definitely. year they, mm -hmm. you know yes, what I mean yes. and the year before I was just in one of the subcommittees of um, mm -hmm. my school the computer engineering mm -hmm. school I wasn't even in the union that time uh, but to have uh, gone up those and the support that I got was overwhelming mm -hmm. and then even when I became the president there was still two of them uh, especially one of them who was mm -hmm. my vice president uh -huh. he was still trying to be the president because he was much more senior <laughs> <laughs> so you're used to politics oh, already. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it was, it, was, uh, it was challenging because for me, I was younger, so I also was giving him due respect with his experience and all. Mm -hmm. But at the end, no, the committee decided that, no, Palji, we want you to co continue being the president. And mm -hmm. So it was challenging times here yeah, from the start, but we did a lot of big things in NTU, including mm -hmm. the inter-Asian um, national debates that we started around uh -huh. the world, which never existed at that point, and also tried to raise a million dollars for the fund of the Students' Council and all that. Mm -hmm. So I have been involved in all these areas for many many years mm. uh, both in school both outside school both on community level and both uh, even in professional basis mm. so it has always been my passion in helping people succeed okay yeah. so it's your desire to help that That's makes right. you want to run yeah. so how would this experience like <coughs> help you should you be elected um, well, I think I realized this five years ago when Mr. Desmond Lim once again told me and we had a six hour talk at the beach, I remember, East wow. Coast. It's he was cool. telling me all the different angles that, that, that mm -hmm. Singaporeans need to be helped with and how I can contribute in one mm -hmm. way or another. And I remember when I went for those elections at that time, I was a little bit apprehensive in 2011 uh -huh. because it was something very new. But he guided, he coached me and most importantly, I can say, a lot of Singaporeans from the ground up were mm -hmm. coming up to us and saying, look, we face this problem, that problem. And when you put them all together, mm -hmm. you realize um, on the surface, we may have reached from third world to first world as mm -hmm. a nation, mm -hmm. but the common man on the street is still having still. a lot of, yes, is still having a lot of issues. So and what's the biggest complaint then? Okay, the, the first one, I think the biggest one is this difference in that, um, you know, you, it's called the uh, Gini coefficient, mm -hmm. the rich the income, getting richer, income the income disparity. that's, disparity. Okay, good, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you're aware of those yeah. things. Now, when you look at it, the rich are getting so much richer, mm -hmm. and the poorer are getting even worse off. Now, mm -hmm. what happens in the middle class, that, that's the big range, forget about the real poor ones, they are already complaining a lot, mm -hmm. but even in the middle class, those people are having day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, you can say, problems meeting the ends, mm -hmm. and trying to reach uh, a comfort comfortable lifestyle for themselves and for their children mm -hmm. and, and for the future of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you something very honestly. As a community on the whole, everyone says, I mean, I'm working on some projects overseas. I just came back yesterday mm -hmm. from there. And everybody says, Singapore, oh, you're so lucky. You're this, you're the... I mean, they know it's the cleanest, the greenest, and also now the most expensive city. <laughs> yes. but, but you see, the outsiders don't mm -hmm. get the inside feel of what the daily um, routine and what the common man is going through every day. Mm -hmm. So financially, that's one thing. Number two, healthcare today is becoming an issue. Mm -hmm. Why? Because can I just say something? The rising cost relates to even expenses in terms of a person's health. Now, they say health is wealth anyway. Now, mm -hmm. with our aging population, as we grow older, 
Chances are even myself, I speak for it. Last one week, I've been so sick, which I've never faced in the last 40 over years of mm -hmm. my life. And I realized, yes, not just me, but as an aging population, our needs for medical care are going to go up. But if the cost is going up and up and up, mm -hmm. as the days go by, Singaporeans are not going to have enough left for their retirement. Why? Because most of the money was already used in housing. Now, mm -hmm. that's another issue. Mm -hmm. I'm just touching on, on, on the core points. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, it's the whole spectrum of a person's life that is being affected. Mm -hmm. So they used most of their money for housing to pay for it and what's left with CPF and ask about yourself when I was younger they said 55 retire then 58 mm -hmm. then 60 62 65 and some people mm -hmm. are saying no love mate just carry on working until you can as long as you can Do, don't even think about retiring mm -hmm. because that mass of money the CPF fund now that's another issue so if you ask me it's, the a, short lot set, it's a lot mm -hmm. of issues mm -hmm. that money was for our you can say as we grow old but no mate it's been uh, used up yeah, in but we have, we have heard a lot of these complaints already that's right but like I think most people want to know like what what are the what are the solutions to it? How Very how good. do we handle this problem as well? Very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Now SDA has been an alliance. I think you also know it's mm -hmm. not just one party, but a lot of different parties coming together, working together for the common goal. Mm -hmm. And the other thing beautiful about SDA is that we always listen to the feedback from a lot of people. We have been formulating some of the policies. I'm not supposed to maybe reveal today the manifesto, mm -hmm. but in the manifesto, let me just put it this way: uh, maybe we'll have another interview once my board clears it. But okay, there are really? seven main areas areas that we are going to focus on and each of the area has got a sub point of at least three to five action steps so whether it's healthcare whether it's education whether it's CPF whether it's the whatever the area that we want to focus mm -hmm. on each including transportation by the way mm -hmm. because that, that's one more big one mm -hmm. each one of them uh, we have actually got three to five uh, major action steps if I started uh, listing them down it will be a It'd full be half an hour mm -hmm. yes yeah, so I'll let you know this much SD has already focused on it we already have our reports going on we have, we have gone through three phases of of revision on our manifesto okay, cool. and it will be revealed in the next few days to come and I'm very sure I will list for you the concrete 13 or you can say actually there are more than 13 steps altogether mm -hmm. but those are the minimum steps that are action oriented because SDA doesn't just believe in giving you the problems everybody now seems to know the problems mm -hmm. what are the solutions what is going to change and that's why we need to be uh, the voice of the people and be in Parliament not just during this period but for the next five years and many more years to come so we can make these effective changes otherwise no Singaporeans lives are not going to change they have been like that for so long we cannot allow this slip to keep going on mm -hmm. okay. so these elections I think are a very important crucial thing why because two things Mr. Lee has passed on his pioneer team 16 of them if I'm not mistaken are leaving the cabinet now with that that big group I can say 100 over years of political experience knowledge know how is going up so what is so good about the new 16 people that are replacing them for that matter our opposition leaders party leaders from every party I think are much more well prepared than the new 16 that are coming on the other side because mm -hmm. at least for the last five years if not for 10 15 years every opposition leader has been understanding the ground walking the ground mm -hmm. writing policies trying to come up with different alternatives and solutions and there I believe Singaporeans now need to see that those 16 who have stepped down from the ruling party yes they served us well we thank them for the past 50 mm -hmm. years for bringing Singapore to this level but the new 16 ones who are coming in are in no way matched even halfway to the capabilities mm -hmm. of the opposition Opposition leaders that are coming in. Okay. Now that is the message we need to get across. That look, Singapore is loved by all. None of the opposition leaders want a worse off situation. We only want it to get better. I think SD is an all-encompassing um, uh, party. Mm -hmm. and an alliance. We will serve every person who is in Singapore, basically whether they are citizens or they're just visiting us for some time here and there. Mm -hmm. But the distinction we really, really want to make is the difference from true blue Singaporeans who were actually people who came up, went to NS, served all the way, grew up with the values and culture of local Singaporeans mm -hmm. versus some people who are here only for certain years, opportunists in some way to make their lives better, make themselves um, have a step towards another part of the world because they don't have long-term plans to stay on in this country. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> we want to draw that distinction and say, look, Singaporeans who are true blue Singaporeans should be protected both through constitution and in every other mean to be given priority in every other way beyond the needs of everyone else. We mm -hmm. respect everybody. We take care of everyone who comes to Singapore. That's all inclusive, all mm -hmm. encompassing. But no, where the true blue Singaporeans are concerned, there are already things in our manifesto which we have written mm -hmm. that we want them to be given priority on. We want them to be make, basically put on a pedestal a little higher and above everybody else. That's mm -hmm. where the distinction lies.
<laughs> yeah, so there's uh, been a lot of debate and discussion going on about the definition of true blue Singaporeans because as you realize some people say that we are we came from immigrants as well. Of so course. how would SDA define what is true blue Singaporeans? Oh that's a beautiful question. Because I'm also one of those. I was eight years old when I came to Singapore, mm -hmm. to be very frank. And um so you are right, this question has actually been uh, fired at me that Paji, how can you say that when you also were born in you know another country? I was I was I was eight. Uh, the difference, I think, is the moment I was eight, yes, as a little boy, I had a little cultural background from wherever I came mm -hmm. from in India. I'm proud of the, my roots. I'm very happy with those things. But the moment a child comes at the age of eight years old, the rest of his upbringing, like in my case, my schooling, then I went to college here in Singapore, then I went to national service here, then I went to the universities and all that, and the rest of my life I've been working here. Until more recently, fine, my work uh, makes me travel quite a bit. So that gives me a global perspective. But watch this. A person from the eight years of eight Age, that has got good uh, opportunity and a chance to be emu uh, to be you can say to be um, uh, what's the word emulated no no emulated is the wrong absorb word the to be to absorb the culture to, to actually learn the, the the ways of life down here now maybe that's the distinction number two NS really made me a man I'll be very mm -hmm. frank living in the community of totally I was the only Sikh in the whole entire camp <laughs> so you know everyone made fun of me whatever not but at the end of the day no that also made me um, gave me the ability to live with people who are real Singaporeans and then the campaigns that were held where they was keep uh, green uh, courtesy campaigns and so many things those took so many years to brainwash me into becoming what I can call a Singaporean mm -hmm. now on the other side a new person who comes in who is already a graduate who is already working his mindset has already been made to order in the previous country when they come here now they have no opportunity to even allow themselves to become a little mm -hmm. bit more Singaporean so I think mm -hmm. there is no hard and fast line what makes a true, true blue Singaporean but I think if you never had all this upbringing no you can't actually relate to the life and the way of a Singaporean, which is supposed to be, mm -hmm. and that that to us, I think, is 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 a is a line that we can look for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, my second last question: There's been a lot of talk going on right now about the elitism uh, in our society. For example, the most recent one written by the RI principal and the letter to Straits Times. So, would like to just ask your comments on it. Uh, my simple comments are: Democracy has always been the rule of the people, by the people, for the people. It has never been the idea of only a certain ruling class or upper class of uh, people come and have the ability to rule the rest of us. And I think that's the approach taken by SDA, that we actually represent the common man on the street. We ourselves are common people on the streets. There's none of us who is going to come back um, and then just say, oh, I belong to something higher than you, or none of us are scholars of one sort or the other. Although we are intelligent in every way, and I think we can we can be on par with any scholar for that matter. But SDA's approach has always been to be the voice of the common person, the common Singaporean, because that is the people who are actually suffering the most, not the ones who are the elites. The elites, they can always take care of themselves in every way. They will always be taken care of by other elites too. But yes, what Singaporeans need is a voice for the common man. And I think that's what uh, the emphasis all has to be, that power has to be returned to Singaporeans because Singapore is part of Singaporeans, it was for Singaporeans and I believe forever we will only excel if we concentrate and focus on the common man too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so final question. <coughs> why, why should people support SDA? I think SDA is in a, a, a very unique situation right now. We have three things that are going for us very well. Number one, we have uh, always been an alliance, the Singapore Democratic Alliance. An alliance is coming together of different minds, even different parties, different people coming together to focus on a common goal. So I know at the end of the day, we may not as an individual party be ready to run uh, the Singapore country because we don't have enough members on our side. But as an alliance, we are willing to and we are open to and we invite every other party to come together as a coalition to work together for the betterment of this country. Number two, the second very unique um, thing that going on with SDA is our chairman has had years of experience in terms of running town councils and also making sure that the needs are of the simple common citizens are met. Now this is very important. Why is it so important? Because at the end of the day, part of our duty of course is to come up with policies, fight for policies, have debates in parliament. But on the other side, town council is also one of our major responsibilities. So SDA today is in a very unique situation that we have 
have someone who has had years of experience and we can tap on his experience to make sure that our home base is always taken care of and number two not just us but we are always ready to help others too and the third reason i think sd is in a very um the right time and right place at the right time kind of thing because singaporeans as a whole are ready for a change change can be difficult at the start change along the way can also have its ups and downs but at the end of the day the rewards that are waiting for us at the end of the rainbow that change can bring is something i think singaporeans are waking up to in general and your media channels that you you represent and many other channels the online channels and a lot of other new opportunities to bring people together to bring ideas together and most importantly the desire that singaporeans already have right now and the support they're willing to give to sda i think is one of the other third uh, very strong cornerstone why it's the right time for us uh, to win this election and go on to serve singaporeans for many more years to come